Hello everyone, Mr. Storkin here, and once again we're at the good old Tier Maker, this time ranking um, a show that's recently ended, Finland and Bakugan, but this time I want to take a look at every season of the Arrow, uh, of Arrow, and we're going to be ranking them um, in terms of well, my general opinion of them. Now my opinion on Arrow is that you can split Arrow into two parts, um, the really good seasons and the really bad seasons, and the really bad seasons are at least, I'd say a B or below, and the A's are at least an A or above. So we can already use that to differentiate some of them. Um, this is so the ones that are like I'm gonna quickly do this to make things really easy. Season one, this isn't the places, but it's just to split them up. And this is season three. This is season five, you can tell by the new costume. I believe so. Yeah, that is season five. Season eight and season two. Those are the good ones. The rest of them are terrible. Seven. No, that's six. This one's seven. No, this one was four. My mistake. And this one was five. So that's how we can rank them. Um. So yeah, let's rank them from the beginning. Um, my personal opinion. Um, let's start with ranking the best of the best because then it makes things a lot easier. So I'm gonna put them in um, chronological order. So the best seasons of Arrow are definitely season. One, two, five, and eight. And between them, I think two is the personal gold standard. So of all time, two is the best season of Arrow by far. It definitely needs to stand out like the best of the best. Um, in terms of the worst of the best, um, in terms of like a range like in between, I'd either give it to um, these two. Um, between the two, um, I I give a ah. Uh, I'll give the final season an A ranking. It wasn't the best in terms of ending the story, but I felt like it did a decent job what it is, what it need to be. Um, but overall, I, I think the ending was alright. It told the story that it needed to tell. It definitely did finish all of her story. And because of that, I kind of think it deserves at least the A ranking, even though I don't feel like they ended all of her story the best way possible. Um, now, um, I think season one should be up there with season two. Not as great as season two, but it's right up there. Season five, um, yeah, I'll put season five there. I think season five needs to stay there. But um, of these, I don't think season five was necessarily the greatest. It took a while for it to get started, but once it got started, it was great. It was probably the best era of our season at that time. Um, Legends was close, but it was it was definitely up there. It was just downright more interesting, in my opinion. Because of that, it's just, it was much better, I would say. Um, when it comes to the worst seasons, again, I say you can rank this up into two sections. You can rank them up to the really horrible ones. You can rank them to the really good ones. Of the worst season possible, like, hands down was the worst season. Season four is the worst season of the show. I give that a D rank overall. It was just disappointing in terms of the rest of the show. And just downright, downright was just awful. And I think it's because of that it deserves... To be there. Um, that being said, after that, I think season three is the next technical worst. So I'm putting it in a lower place. S yeah, season three and season four. It was just like right after one another and after that fantastic season two. It just felt A, out of place, and B, really did kill the mood of the show. Um, well, I did like it. There were there were some good episodes, um, especially in seasons um. There was good ideas in um, season six with Oliver being the mayor, but it didn't really pan out and didn't really work. There was also the ideas of him being a father, which I thought should have been the central story, but didn't ultimately work. The main villains were not that interesting, and kind of the rushed rift between the team didn't really work, in my opinion, as much as it worked in season five. Um, now, what's comparing, like, um,. Um, I think I'm going to put Season 7, maybe, at the B rank. I thought Season 7 was a big mess for the show. Um, but not as bad as Season 6. Season 6, it came off that really big high that was Season 5, where it was just like, we have this huge cliffhanger. I remember even watching it. I was watching it live. And I was just like, wow, this is downright disappointing. Of that show. Yeah, that was in Season 3 of um, Legends, so Season 4 of The Flash. I was like, wow, this was, like, very disappointing. Considering Legends had, A, a pretty disappointing premiere, and The Flash had a pretty good one, in my opinion. Um, 
I think it it was alright. Season um, 7 had ideas. I just didn't know how to execute them. I like the idea of the alternate vigilante being Emiko Queen. I really do. There were some good episodes. I feel like the future stuff almost ruined it. I, I think the future stuff was really hard to watch because I wasn't that invested in them um, compared to the regular story. But those that future stuff was at least better than anything in Season 4. Season 4 just ruined the continuity of the show. Really pissed off fans of the idea of magic implements. You know, some shows you have to implement magic, and I do know it's part of a shared universe, but it doesn't work in the context of um, Arrow. It's like having magic in um, well, Legends. Actually, Legends is probably the only one that implemented magic well. I think Arrow was kind of the floating ground on how to implement magic to use for a hot girl, but I feel like that would have worked well in itself. It didn't even implement it into the main staple of the show because shows can exist within their own things because you don't feel like these characters work well with storylines and so forth. Um, but overall, I think I give seven a B. So as you can see, Arrow is kind of all scattered throughout the list. I did sandwich them in between. So I I like the point is that whenever watching Arrow, that Arrow has kind of a fifty fifty ratio. Half of the seasons are great. Half of the seasons are bad. Um, some of those bad seasons aren't as horrible. I argue. Um, problem is, one was pretty good. Season two actually things a whole lot further. But then I felt like we got that really low with the Ra's al Ghul storyline, which promised so much. But at the same time, I didn't feel as betrayed by it that I was by Season 4. Season 4 implemented a whole bunch of ideas and nice stories that didn't really feel like they went anywhere. Characters felt betrayed and didn't fit their characteristics. Um, Felicity was rather horrible in Season 4. I think that slowly was the decline of her character, um, which is problematic. I think... If a show is really well done, like I'm going to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do the ranking. Um, even when you make a detestable character, you still kind of like them if the show is really good. If there's a really good show, if you want to change a character, you have to either change them for the better. And Felicity felt like, even in her track, like she's like, oh, well, she's growing as a person. It's like, Felicity doesn't really change. She's the most vanilla character. And... The fact that they tried to change her, I gave her the credit for like giving her development, but it didn't work. So that's why I think that one worked, and she just came across as her. The villain was good for that one, Damien, but he didn't work well in Arrow. Um, next one I argue season three because season three just felt like a letdown. After season two, I felt like up to season four. Season four was the reason I put season four worse actually, is because it felt like such a huge betrayal of the show. At least season three. To a degree, still felt like Arrow. It felt like Arrow at that point was like, okay, Arrow was at this consistent state. It was the closest that felt like Arrow. Because of that, I give it a bit higher ringing. I give it a lot more slide, even though it was the most disappointing I was in a season. I did binge watch that one. I binge watched up to season three because season four was premiering. I didn't watch the show beforehand. But overall, it wasn't my personal favorite, to be honest. Um. When it came to deciding between Season 1 and Season 2, I think Season 2 is a clear one because I felt like they had much better direction and were able to go a bit further. Arrow, the first season, felt a bit... Um, it was intriguing about what happened on the island. We know what happened to him eventually on the island, but it was kind of a nice starting off point, in my opinion. Um, actually, Season 3, what I liked about Season 3 is they didn't... Because they implemented the idea that he wasn't staying on the island, which I thought was really good. I wish they focused more on the beer thing. Season 5 retconned all of that and made me very much hate... The um, stuff that was happening off time. In terms of flashbacks, no, season four had the worst flashbacks in the main story. Because if you guys mean like the arrow, arrow, you just like, okay, what's the best aspects? Like the flashbacks have to make sense. They have to work in context. And season two implemented that really well. Season one was just kind of like it happened. It was almost everything. It has no context to what's going on. So there's no. Well, okay. It's showing us the origin of Oliver, so it has to show it. So, okay, to a degree, we have to see it. Um, in between them, between season. Five in season eight because season eight had crisis. Um, it didn't really feel like an arrow season. It didn't feel like the whole show was initially going to end. I felt season seven was an ending point for the show. They ran themselves into a corner then, um, because they're just like you need to hide because these people are after you. And it felt like season eight, if it wasn't following that crisis route, it felt like that was a clear path to be like okay, this feels like an ending point for the arrow. Just them like living life on the run. Which I would have liked instead of this whole crisis thing. But the crisis thing was what executed because it kind of like celebration of everything. And also was leading to do whatever they wanted to do with Oliver before they had to write him out. I didn't like the future stuff in season 8. Um, eight and um, I didn't like the future characters. A main criticism I get towards the show. Um, I don't like them as characters. A lot of people are going to defend those characters. I just don't care for them. I find them really boring. William's the only exception to that. 
I feel like he really excelled in that season, but they were trying to focus too much on Mia, who I personally didn't care for as a character. Um, season 7 was kind of just there. Um, it had trouble finding its footing. There was some actually interesting idea episodes in there, like the documentary and the... Um, the Future Earth was a nice concept, it just didn't work, and the one where they were just like, how did the events go? Like, the question where they were like, kind of like, throwing the police for a loop. That was an interesting episode with Roy. And I do like that aspect. Um, I, I give it that because it had more of the interesting episodes, interesting episode concepts that I felt kind of worked. All over working with the SCPD, it was a nice idea. It really was. Um, I didn't like the villain, I didn't like the ending, and it just fell flat on that regard. You just didn't know if one Ricardo Diaz to be the villain or not. Or the longbow hunters to be the threats or not. I would see King of Sex much lower. Because I felt like it betrayed a majority of the show. Um, it felt like it was like, we don't trust Oliver because of this stuff. It's like, yeah, it's like Diggle doesn't trust Oliver because of this. It's like, yeah, we did this stuff where Oliver was isolated. Like, it was like, no one really trusts Oliver. We had that in season three when he was pretending to be a Holocene. A Holocene? Um, you know, when he's part of the, um, League of Assassins. But outside of that, it was just kind of a repeat of what happened, and I really didn't like what they did with Laurel, because, again, they realized their backlash with Season 5, and acknowledging that Laurel was an important character, and they wrote her off. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm giving this stuff more analysis than my Bakugan video. I do apologize. Um, I thought Ricardo Diaz was a man villain. I like the idea of the guy from, um, the Mentalist, the Mentalist or Criminal Minds. But you know who I'm talking about, um, being the ma one of the main villains, Kane James, going forward. I thought he was a good villain. Um, definitely would have worked better if, like, Ricardo Diaz was Goon. Or, that would have been the good season to implement the Longbow Hunters. Not really as a threat. Keep Kane James as a threat, because I feel like the human threats helped the show a bit. It would have been a nice change of pace. But that's my ranking of every season of The Arrow. It's going to 1, 5, 8. Those are the great season. So that's the top part of the sandwich, part, part, top half. And then it's season 7, 6, 3, and 4. If you disagree with my opinions, please let me know in the comment section down below. We're going to try and do this every week to kind of keep things interesting until I get bored of it. But anyway, till then, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Bye-bye.